So, there were a few of you that asked uh, to see the setup for my dad's removable winch. Now there's some pros and cons to this, we'll get into that later, but right now let's just go over the how. And uh, I'll show you how we did this setup. I'm Tyler, and this is Bleepin' Jeep. The first thing you're going to need is a front bumper. Now you can purchase some front bumpers that have a receiver hitch already in them. If you've got a winch bumper, you can just pull your winch off. We picked up this fitting at Harbor Freight. It was pretty inexpensive. I think it was under 30 bucks. This will then mount where your winch mounted and turns your winch bumper into a generic receiver hitch. All of the accessories, the wires and so forth needed to operate the winch stay right here in their own ammo box, securely fastened to the winch itself, so you never have to look for them. So we just do a little tie down strap like that. Piece of closed cell foam to keep it from rubbing and rattling. And let me show you what's in this box. So here's the 50 millimeter ammo box. Inside is a, a short snatch strap. We've got the pin and clip to, uh, to hold the winch in the receiver. This is a half inch wrench, that's to release one of the brackets we fabricated and I'll show you what that's for here in a second. We got the controller lead. The electrical wiring for the winch, all set up ready to connect to the battery terminals. Also inside we've got a snatch block, a hook, and a couple of uh, clevis. Now a winch with a full load of cable weighs a lot and it's pretty important that you you fasten this down securely or in a rollover this will become a missile that would actually you know absolutely take your head off so we fabricated a bracket and a tray to securely hold this in the rear while we're doing our wheeling but we we also wanted it relatively convenient to be able to remove the winch so there's kind of a balance you have to strike there between securing the winch and still being able to get it out without too much trouble. So our solution to, to answer both of those problems was to create a tray that securely fastens through the roll cage and the floor of the Jeep, but still allows us to get the winch off relatively easy. So the first step is we've got to take this wing nut off right here. Taking that wing nut off releases this bracket here. The next step is to remove this bracket here. And we just have a couple of half inch bolts and this is the wrench that came out of the, the uh, ammo can with all of the winch accessories. Now is there a faster way to set this up? Probably. But you got to remember that we do most of our wheeling, almost all of our wheeling, we do in the desert on slick rock. So it's very few times that you actually need to use a winch where we go wheeling. Now, you still need to have one, but having it immediately ready and accessible for us isn't as big of a deal as it might be for one of you guys, especially if you live, you know, on the East Coast or the Midwest where you're dealing with a lot of mud. This setup may not work for you. You may need to do something faster. But this works pretty good for us. Now it's time to put your big boy pants on and yank this sucker out. Here's a little closer look at the bracket we created. It's quarter inch plate steel. And as you can see, it ties into the roll cage here. It ties into the roll cage here. Now it appears to only be tacked on this side, but we've welded it on the back side. So it is welded quite securely there. This was just some, uh, some L channel. Looks like it was an old bed frame that we cut up and it's bolted to this bottom plate. I guess you could weld it if you wanted to weld it. The nuts back here that these bolt into are welded so you don't need to worry about getting a wrench under there when you're trying to take this 
bracket off. It's it's pretty dang secure. I've got no concern at all about this thing flying off of here if we get in a rollover. To begin with, we've got a quick connect already wired into the winch. Get your positive and negative. I think we picked that up at Harbor Freight as well. You remember in the winch kit, we have the other side with a long enough lead to reach to the rear of the vehicle so that we can winch backward if we need to. But there's the other side of the quick connect with a couple of eyelets. And let me show you how we attach these to the battery. Now you can get batteries that have an extra set of terminals on them. <clears throat> the Optima battery in my YJ is that way. But most of you are probably going to have just a generic regular battery like this. This is your negative and this is your positive. So our solution, you know, normally your, your leads are hooked up to your battery and we didn't want to try to run a winch off of this little tiny post and clutter up our, our battery terminals. So what we did, my dad took some copper pipe and he smashed it flat then he soldered a, a short lag bolt onto it and you can see it's got these two washers and a wing nut. Then we drilled a hole in it. Now these holes have to be different sizes because your negative terminal is always smaller than your positive terminal. So we made one for the positive side and it just slips over and goes all the way to the base. Made one for the negative side. It does the same thing. Now we can put our battery terminals back over the top. Those battery terminals hold on these copper plates. We don't clutter up the terminal itself. And we get a much larger, in my opinion, conduct, you know, uh, area of conductivity with that big plate of copper. So I'm going to go ahead and put my terminals back on, get them all tightened down. And then I'll show you how this wires up. Once your battery terminals are secured again, and so are the plates, now you can just undo your wing nuts. We put a washer below and above the tabs. Mount your negative to your negative, your positive to your positive. I'm not going to undo this roll because it's such a pain in the neck to re-zip tie it and everything, but you get the idea. Now you can run your cable out, plug in your winch, and your winch is ready to operate, rear front or back. So that's our setup. Now, there are some pros and cons to doing this. And before you guys start trolling me in the comments about how long it took to set that up, I know, okay? <laughs> Where we do most of our wheeling is on slick rock. And honestly, I've never had to use my winch on slick rock. Now, it, I'm not saying it, it can't happen, that's why we have a winch, because it may happen. But for the, the type of wheeling that me and my dad do, we, we very, very rarely ever use a winch. So this is a good setup for him. Another pro is that it takes a lot of that weight off of your front suspension. It gets your winch out of the weather. And uh, one thing I hadn't considered until one of our, our viewers, uh, Kevin O., uh, commented in my my Jeep Addiction video he lives in a large metropolitan area and having a winch on the front of his bumper is just an invitation for theft for somebody to steal it from him now if you live in a big city and especially if it's your bug out vehicle and you need to have a winch maybe this is the way to secure your winch still have it relatively available uh, but have it more as a, as a theft deterrent where it's not visible. Some of you overlander guys, if you're doing uh, overlanding in a third world country, sometimes it's better to go low profile. Uh, if you've got a big expensive winch bumper and a big expensive winch sitting out on the front of your truck, 
that again is an invitation to for theft for somebody to come and steal it from you so this is one way that you can get it out of sight and out of mind but still have it available for use some cons yeah this is slow you know you guys that live on the east coast you do a lot of mud a lot of wet slick wheeling over granite boulders and that the kind the kind of wheeling that Matt does maybe this isn't such a good setup you know your buddies would probably get pretty tired of waiting for you to to hook all this up but again once it's hooked up it's hooked up leave it on during your wheeling trip and when you get to go home take it back off and stow it you know it's up to you to decide whether or not this is a, a good system but this is something you can do if you want and you can see the way that we've done it you know if you want to do it different or not do it at all more power to you well that's it for this week Thanks for watching. Don't forget to visit bleepinjeep.com. And remember, if you're a Jeep addict, the first step to recovery is a good winch. So I had a few requests. Well, that lens is dirty.